scheduled meeting of the Arlington City Commission, which has been duly posted to order. At this time, I'd like to call upon uh, Commissioner Mike Mesmore to lead us in the invitation. Uh, dear God, um, please look over the people of Texas, the people of this land, and have mercy on those who are sick and suffering, captives, prisoners, those who are traveling, those who are ill. And grant victory to your people over their adversaries. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everybody here to our meeting tonight. We're glad to have you here. And... Uh, for some very special presentations uh, tonight. This was a, a fairly short agenda, but I want to, before we begin, to introduce some special guests that we have here in the audience. Uh, and uh, I'd like to begin with uh, uh, the Primera Sindica, uh, the Mayor Pro Tem of Matamoros, Licenciada Alma Garcia Betancourt. We have Antonio Amaro Chacon, el abogado del municipio. And also Renaldo del Toco, representante de Matamoros en Estados Unidos, the international representative. So we're glad to have them here. There, there'll be, uh, uh, you'll see a special presentation uh, that, and some special business involving Dr. Morris here and later in the meeting. We'll begin uh, with item one, which is the public announcement of events. Dave? Uh, the big <coughs> event coming up this week is your very own Mayor's State of the City Address, which is going to be Friday. Uh, the doors at the Reese will open at 11.30. It is open to the public. Lunch tickets will be sold by the Rotary Club on a first club, first come, first serve basis at the door for $12 per person. And lunch will be served to the first 75 people to buy tickets. Can you all hear Dave okay? Can you hear Dave okay? Okay, you might want to scooch the mic up, up a little bit. Uh, there will also be seating for those who attend and choose not to dine, and there is no charge for admission. It's part of the Rotary Club's regular weekly uh, luncheon up on the fifth floor of the Reese. So when you walk through the front doors, the elevator should be right in front of you there in downtown Harlingen. Uh, also, one announcement that didn't quite make it to the slides is uh, this weekend on Saturday, there will be a neighborhood cleanup. That's scheduled from Garfield Street to Grant Street between J Street and L Street from 8 a.m. till noon on Saturday. The meeting place will be the uh, intersection of J Street and Garfield. I believe that's in Commissioner, Commissioner Sanchez's district. So the public and all the neighborhood is uh, welcome to participate in that. Uh, in other upcoming events, on Saturday, February 8th, there will be the Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Festival at Lonsey Hill Park. Uh, the theme will be Calling All Superheroes, and there will be heart games there from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. On Sunday, February 23rd, there will be the second annual Ms. South Texas Senior Pageant at the Harlingen Municipal Auditorium from 2 p.m. to 5.30 and pageant director Ilya Lopez is very excited working with the city and hopes anyone that's willing to help her expand the participation in the audience will contact her and she'll be more than happy to make it an extra special extravaganza. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All right, item two is a presentation of uh, proclamations and I'll begin with Red Cross Month. Yes, we'd like to call up uh, Santana Garcia and Idalia Trevino to receive this uh, proclamation. 
for the Red Cross. President Franklin D. Roosevelt <coughs> proclaimed the first Red Cross Month in support of Red Cross fundraising efforts to respond to needs brought on by World War II. Since that time, every president, including President Obama, has designated March as Red Cross Month in the United States, and whereas the Red Cross uh, was created in 1881 by Clara Barton and officially chartered by Congress in 1900 to provide national and international relief during disasters, to give relief to the military and serve as a means of communication between members of the armed forces and their families. From the beginning, people in this country have volunteered and donated funds to support the Red Cross. And whereas the American Red Cross South Texas chapter, established in the Rio Grande Valley 95 years ago in 1917, impacts and enhances tens of thousands of valley uh, residents every year. The board of directors, paid staff of six, and over 800 dedicated and trained volunteers provide disaster relief, armed forces uh, services, educational programs, health and safety, plus community programming to citizens in Willacy, Cameron, Hidalgo, and Star Counties. Whereas services and programs are made possible by the unique partnership between those who give their time as our esteemed volunteers and those who give financial gifts, our trade donors. The South Texas chapter will continue the proud tradition and its mission to supply relief to victims of disaster and help people to prevent, prepare for, and respond to emergencies. Whereas the Red Cross is a time for the Red Cross Month is a time to remind everyone of the work of the American Red Cross in communities across the country and around the globe and how we depend on public support to help people in need. Now, therefore, I, Chris Boswell, Mayor of the City of Harlingen, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested in me on behalf of the City Harlingen City Commission, do hereby proclaim March 2014 as Red Cross. <coughs> well, thank you very much, and thanks to the community for all the support that we get. Uh, one thing that I found out, uh, my wife and I had the pleasure of going, I said the pleasure of going to help uh, the Rio for the last month and a half, but I see that the Red Cross here in the Valley is very strong, thanks to you, and thanks to everybody that participates with us, and thank you all very much. Great How many people here have taken a Red Cross class of any kind? First day, life saving, switching seats. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Go Red for Women 
movement has been impacting the health of women for 10 years. And more than 627,000 women's lives have been saved, and 330 fewer women are dying every day. And whereas in celebration of the 10th birthday of National Wear Red Day on February 7, 2014, Go Red for Women is asking all women across America to go red by wearing and speaking red, uh, red uh, G, get your numbers, uh, O, own your lifestyle, stop smoking, lose weight, exercise, and eat healthy, R, realize your risk, women think it won't happen, but uh, heart disease is, uh, is the cause of one in three female deaths each year, E, for educate your family, make healthy food choices for you and your family, teach your kids the importance of staying active, and D, don't be silent. Tell every woman you know that heart disease is the number one killer. Raise your voice at GoRedForWomen.org. Now, therefore, I'm Chris Boswell, Mayor of the City of Harlingen. In recognition of the importance of ongoing and right fight against heart disease and stroke, to hereby proclaim Friday, February 7th, 2014, as National Wear Red Day in Harlingen, Texas, and urge all citizens to show their support by wearing the color red. So we want to present this to all of our good leaders here at the uh, American Heart Association and thank them for what they do. Thank you guys. I did have a little you know what I did. On behalf of the American Heart Association, I'd like to thank you, Mayor Boswell and City Commission for helping us to go red for women movement. Since the first National World Red Day 10 years ago, we've made tremendous strides in the fight against heart disease in women. In order to continue to reduce risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke, we must look at one major contributor, smoking. According to the new Surgeon General report, the 20 million individuals who lost their lives to smoking addiction over the past 50 years, 2.5 were non-smokers exposed to secondhand smoke. Ongoing exposure can uh, increase your risk of stroke by 20 to 30 percent. Thank you all for going red to fight against heart disease. By wearing red on February 7th, you raise awareness of critical work that needs to be done to ultimate further our goal. And I do want to remind you that it's nearly 10 years ago that I was co-chair and we did smoke-free Harlingen, except for the bars and the bowling alleys, boys. We need to work on it. But anyway, I want to thank you. Thank you very much. Executive Director of our, our award-winning, uh, nationally well-known Boys and Girls Club. Thank you. Honorable Mayor, City Commissioners, Mr. Yadena, uh, appreciate the opportunity to make a brief presentation. If you'll bear with us, it's actually a two-part presentation. Uh, the first one is to uh, actually we want to uh, verbally honor uh, a number of city departments that uh, are instrumental in the success of the Boys and Girls Club every year. Many of those leaders are here. Uh, Parks and Recreation, uh, we have many things we do in, in cooperation with them. The Community Development Block Grant Program, uh, the City of Harlingen Health Department, which helps us feed uh, about 40,000 meals each summer to kids uh, that are not in school and wouldn't be receiving meals. A lot of cooperative things that go on with the uh, Boys and Girls Club and City Departments, and I you know they're unsung heroes many times, and we want to recognize them. But today we want to uh, especially recognize a, a group of men who have uh, gone above and beyond the call of duty to assist the Boys and Girls Club, and that's the Harlingen Professional Firefighters Association, who for the past several years have taken on the arduous task of cooking the meat for our annual barbecue. Uh, last year we served about 3,500 plates, so that gives you an idea of how much work goes into it. And I uh, saw so we were blessed to have a large group of the firefighters. I hope they'll stand up and come up here. Uh, the gentlemen. <coughs> These guys.
guys know how to put out fires, but they also know how to start an important one. <laughs> uh, Ruben, uh, why don't you guys come, come on up here and stand in front of the, the logo, and Dave will get your photo. I want to ask uh, Ruben Balboa uh, to stop here. Uh, I'm especially proud of Ruben. Ruben grew up in the Boys and Girls Club and was a star basketball player for many years. But he's also a real star now because he served as a volunteer coach. And he's our contact person to get all these guys lined up. And, and it's a great group of guys. They're fun-loving. And they do a tremendous job. And it's no accident that we get greater <coughs> reviews on our barbecue over the past several years because of the work that they do. So we do appreciate them. I'd like to introduce, uh, have a couple board members here, Janine Campbell, who's, who's taking pictures, and our board uh, chief volunteer officer, Joe Pettis, who's going to read and present a plaque uh, to the fire, all the Firefighters Association in behalf of the Boys and Girls Club of Harmington. In grateful recognition of outstanding commitment and support to the Boys, Club, Boys and Girls Clubs of Harlingen, Texas, presented to the Harlingen Professional Firefighters Association Barbecue Crew. Thank you very much. We do have a, a second part to this, and uh, uh, I don't know if you wanted to take the picture that you wanted. Them first. Why, don't you wait, why don't you wait a minute? We'll, we'll, get, them get, all, the we'll get them all over there at the same time. I appreciate y'all bearing with us. I, I'd like to, I have a young lady uh, who's one of our club members, and uh, she'd like to briefly address uh, all of y'all and the audience as well. And uh, her real name is Asusena, but we all call her Zena, so I'll let her introduce herself. <coughs> Hi, my name is Asusana Nassad. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Zina. I'm, I am here representing the Boys and Girls Club of Harlingen as a member of the Moyne Gardens Unit. I would like to tell you why the Boys and Girls Club is so important to me. I'm standing here as proof that the Boys and Girls Club has changed my life. With that being said, let me tell you what the club means to me. Two years ago, my brother, two sisters, mother, and I were forced to live in a shelter in Roswell, Texas. This was a result of an abusive father who is currently in prison. Thankfully, a public housing opportunity arose in Harlingen, Texas. My family and I packed up a little we had and moved into the Moyne Gardens. Located in the center of these projects was a huge white and blue building with the words that read Boys and Girls Club. Out of curiosity, I walked into the club and looked around. It's important that you are aware that I had an attitude problem. And within my first few minutes at the club, that was proven. I fully mouthed a bad word I was quickly approached. I was warned about what wasn't allowed and for the first time I saw the consequences of my actions. It was a huge adjustment, being in a new place, but the awesome staff and resources were so helpful. I started participating in different activities and making new friends. By attending the club, not only did my attitude change, but my grades started improving and I started growing into a nice, fun, self-confident and responsible person. To me, the Boys and Girls Club is like a second home. I find so much comfort and love there. Whenever somebody is in need, we always seem to come together as a group and help each other because that's what families do, and that's exactly what we are at my Boys and Girls Club. The impossible becomes possible because we are taught to overcome all obstacles. Every child has it in them to be great. And everywhere you turn, there is always someone there to make sure you reach your full potential. There is also someone who makes sure you Make sure <clears throat> there is always someone who is willing to lend you a helping hand, pick you up when you are down, and give you words of encouragement to keep you pushing forward. Triple play, power hour, and smart moves are just a couple of things we do to not exercise only our bodies, but our minds. Doing things the right way is our motto, and every day we work hard to live by it. Today, I stand here representing my boys and girls of Harlingen, in Texas where great teachers are here. As a member of Boys and Girls Club Torch Club at the Moyne Gardens, our group has learned that it is important to give back to others, especially in our community. To become givers, we started raising money through cupcake sales and concession sales. This is all done by club members. In recent months, we have given gifts to many other groups, such as the local church groups, health organizations, such as the American Cancer Society. Individuals and families need a little help and even our own Boys and Girls Club organization. 
Altogether, in the last three years, we have given out about $6,000. We especially love our local firefighters and our police officers. We gave two gifts of 1000 each, one to Mr. Aaron Warner, an injured firefighter, and one to Officer Carlos Diaz, an injured police officer. Today, we wish to present a check for $200 to the Harlingen Firefighters Association. Wow. <laughs> and a check for $200 to the Harlingen Police Association. Tuesday, January 14th, staff received a total of nine bids. 
All bids uh, received met the uh, bid submittal requirements. The, the lowest bid for the project was submitted by SJW Construction in the amount of $560,737.50. Staff recommends that we award the to the lowest bidder, FJW, in the amount of the five hundred sixty thousand seven thirty seven ninety five cents. Mr. Bobby Wally with FJW is here. If you all have any questions, have we worked with them before? Ah, uh, yes. All right. Is there a motion? <coughs> Make it a motion. Okay. And I'll second that. Okay. To award the bid. Uh, to FJW for 506,000 to FJW construction. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 So aye. Like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> aye. Seven. Is consider take action to approve or deny an interlocal agreement with Cameron County for the reconstruction of Morris Road <coughs> and Hand Road. Dan? Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Morris Road is 50% inside the city limits of Huntington and 50% in the county. We've been working with the county for a few months now trying to get the interlocal agreement to partner with them to reconstruct that road. That road is in terrible shape and it's beyond overlay at this point. We need to reconstruct it. <coughs> the county has come forth and uh, Commissioner Dan Sanchez is proposing that we partner with them, allow them to use their labor and equipment if the city pays for $170,000 towards the materials to do Morris Road. Morris Road right now is a 70, 17 foot, 17 foot wide roadway. We want to do it to a, we want to construct it to a 22 foot broad road, roadway, which would improve the width of, and uh, make it easier for cars to go back and forth to theirs. Highly traveled uh, from Ed Carey all the way to Rangeville Road. Uh, in addition to Morris Road, the Commissioner Sanchez also requested that we partner with the county to improve Hand Road from Primera Road to Wilson Road. 2,212 2, square feet of uh, square yards of hand road is inside the city limits of Harmony. It's kind of sporadic. Starting out at, uh, on Wilson Road, going north, there's a portion that is inside the city, then there's a large portion that is not, and so forth and so on. It's it kind of sporadic. Uh, our portion for, for doing hand road would be about $50,000. And the, the commissioner is proposing to partner with the city of Primera and the school district to get the, the remainder of the money that's needed for hand road uh, so they can go ahead and buy the material and then use county equipment and labor to, to construct the improvements. Staff is recommending approval of the interlocal and we have identified funds that uh, we'll bring forth to the commission at the next meeting as part of a budget amendment uh, so that we can pay our portion of the 170000 up front for Morris Road, and we'll pay the 50000 for Hand Road once uh, the county has executed interlocal agreements with the City of Primera and the school district. Now, the county has not approved this interlocal. This is the first uh, action that's going to be taken on this interlocal. Once we, the City Commission passes this, we'll give that to the county. They'll put it on their agenda, and hopefully <coughs> they'll get it approved, and then we'll move forward with that. Staff is recommending approval. If they say they're going to approve that, uh, <coughs> well, at this point, uh, they're really only going to put labor and equipment, which is about 50% of the total cost of construction. Their yeah. estimate is of 300 and, I believe it's just under $350,000. And so <coughs> half of that, it's about 175. I think we're getting a great deal of 170 for doing that road. Our own estimate to hire a contractor to reconstruct that road is $462,000. I talked to you then about that, and uh, should you tell me you sent up several emails to that back over there. And myself, I have to go talk to Mr. Costco and Pizza Pulido. And I guess that's what we need to do to put a pressure on that because that road needs to be fixed. We've been working with them for several years trying to get this road done. <coughs> you know, we, we know budgets are tight and we know it's difficult. I think for them to come to the table now and wanting to do it, it's a good sign for us. It's a good time. It's a good cost. I think we should we should take this opportunity. It's the win-win well, situation for everybody. Well, both those roads were in my district, mm -hmm. and and I mean, those were immediately brought to my attention when I got elected. And we've been just keep looking how we can do that. I'm always asking where are we on a on a timeline, and I think this is a great opportunity to to get.
get this taken care of. And, and again, Han Road won't be done immediately. Morris Road will be done within this fiscal year, according to the agreement. Han Road will be done once they ex execute uh, interlocals with the Meta and the school district, because they need additional funds for that. <coughs> I, I, I want to make sure the commission understands that we don't have funding for this, but you know, we're, the, the savings that we're going to be that are expected are you know really 50 percent of what the project would cost us. So we're going to come back with a budget amendment, and once it's approved by by the county, and uh, and move forward if, if if approved by the commission. Right. I've been speaking with, with uh, Dan about that. As far as I'm I know, I'm, I'm already aware of that. We have a cost estimate from them, but has anybody done a design on the project, or they just kind of go out there and? Our city engineer had come up with a, a preliminary design. That's how we came up with a $462,000 estimate. That's our estimate, that the 462, that's not theirs, based on what we would construct out there. Now, our estimate does not include some of the driveways, so it'd probably be a little more than 462. It'd probably be in the range of probably uh, close to $500,000, uh, because we'd have to regrade some ditches also. They're including all of the costs in their estimate. Because it is county labor, it is a little bit less expensive. So and the I, county has a, the ability to lay hot mix down? Yes, sir. They, they, do. they have a paver and they have all the equipment. Yes, sir. This is a great opportunity. When they go from 17 to 22, the, um, we're going to have what I'm going to call the, the, the uh, rural type road. It is so a rural we'll have the uh, We'll have the bar ditch. Is it going to be any shoulder? No. Okay. No. So we go from, from pavement <coughs> right to bar ditch. That, that's exactly right. There's no room for a shoulder at 22 feet. Okay. And, uh, and we will, they're going to regrade the drainage, the roadside ditches to improve runoff. You want to do that so you don't lose your pavement. All that is included as part of the estimate. That was my question, to break off on the edges of the road. And so, staff is recommending approval. And again, this is reconstruction. This is not an overlay. Estimated okay. completion. Uh, obviously, uh, it's road, road, uh, roads that need to be approved within the city. I think uh, everybody should be commended to, for partnering, <coughs> finding a way to partner on this, and uh, not have to shoulder, you know, not get it done without having to bear the entire cost. Is there a motion to approve the interlocal agreement? I'll make that motion. A second. Is there any other discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like Thank you. Aye. Motion aye. carries. Thank you, Dan. Item 8 is consider and take action to approve the adoption of the 2012 International Codes and the 2014 National Electric Codes. Ken? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, commissioners, uh, before you and I, uh, periodically, uh, cities and jurisdictions that have building departments uh, have to adopt and update new codes. Um, before you tonight, we're proposing adoption of the 2012 International uh, Codes for Building and the National Electrical uh, Codes for 2014. <coughs> this will bring us up to date. We're currently under the 2006. Uh, this has been creating problems for architects and engineers who are uh, using CAD and software to design to the newer codes. Uh, this code is less stringent than the code <coughs> that came after 2006, which was a 2009 code. We were also, uh, the city manager has been getting letters from ISO uh, telling us that we need to get our codes updated uh, because it could affect the insurance rates for people around the community. And we did budget, as you probably remember, to be able to purchase all the new code books that we need. At the same time, we're going to be adopting the new uh, property maintenance code, which our code enforcement department uh, utilizes, and uh, we purchased the new code books for them. So we'd uh, ask you to, to please uh, take the action to adopt this ordinance tonight so that we can begin to use those new codes. You said ISO has been sending letters. Who or what is ISO? ISO is a company that's headquartered in New Jersey, and basically for all the different jurisdictions around the country, it's kind of like an insurance company that does actuarials. They take a look at what the codes are that they have, and they want to make sure that they have the, the best types of codes for the regions that they live in in order to mitigate uh, problems that might happen uh, if you didn't build up to certain standards and certain codes. Uh, they do it for the fire department codes, they do it for the building codes, and uh, that's who we, uh, the city manager would get the letter from, and, and we told them that we were going to be adopting at the beginning of the year, so we need to send them a letter 
because we don't okay. want for a raise. And obviously, this is new construction, but is this also uh, when somebody refurbishes or builds out? All these codes are applicable in any kind of a building activity where somebody would have to take out a building permit. If you're you going to make it more, more, more easy for that construction? Or it will, it will be more user friendly for anybody, but most importantly, for the architects and engineers that are doing the big projects around the city, they're all set up to design to these newer codes. And in some cases, they come in with plans. They're already designed <coughs> those newer codes, and we've been having to send them away and have them redo it back to the 2006 code. That's obviously an inconvenience we don't want them to have to deal with anymore. If you got any specific questions, the building official, Mr. Ortega, is here. He's an expert in this area. I would like to see those papers <coughs> that uh, approved that. Uh, well, th this is sort of like the, the changes we're going to make. The changes are in our, our packet. Okay. Yeah, sort of like the health care bill. We've got a huge document here that probably only two people have read that we're adopting because it's the new code. And, and my concerns are is that you know, we adopt these codes and we need to do something as a community to address how we deal with some of these older buildings that, and I don't know whether we do that through ordinances or how it would be done, but the analogy that I'll give is, is if I sold somebody a mid-condition 1970 Corvette that was just like it was when it was brand new when I went to title it to you, and the county said, you know what, that doesn't have airbags or ABS brakes, you're going to need to install that. It's a perfectly safe car, and it was safe at its time, and it's still safe today, but it doesn't have all those bells and whistles, and it would be cost prohibitive to add all of those things to it. And so with these older buildings, uh, especially in the downtown area, which is in my district, where we have to constantly fight this battle of, they don't have the right parking. Every time one comes up that's new, they've got to go all the way back through and get a, a go through the uh, zoning board of adjustments to get relief from that when there's it was never designed to have parking like that and it functions without it so I don't know what we can do to streamline that process uh, on these older buildings but I'd like to see us form some sort of a task force or something where the city and the, maybe the realtors in town work together to try to come up with some recommendations to make that more user friendly because like I say every time somebody comes up they have to go through this long process of taking care of what most of us think is pretty obvious that you know we know a building downtown can't meet the same parking requirements that a brand new Walmart has does. Yes sir, um, actually the, the perfect opportunity is right now while we're finishing up with the comprehensive plan process because you might have heard you know, when we were actually having the public input meetings one of the things that our consultants charged with is to look at what they call form-based codes, which would address the zoning parking issue that you're talking about, which is separate from what the building codes are. But those are issues for the older buildings, particularly in the downtown area, with regard to zoning requirements, code requirements, and building requirements, fire requirements, so that would be a, a, a good byproduct to come out of the comprehensive plan process to, to form a little task force like that to, because the, the, the structure for being able to move forward with these form-based codes is going to be in the comprehensive plan, so if we pick up the ball and carry it on to the finish line to adopt it, it will help to address exactly what you're talking about. Can now, when you're talking form-based codes, we're not talking about these buildings. I'm not talking about, he, he's, bring, he's got two subjects here. One right. is the parking for the downtown, <clears throat> which would be the zoning and would be form-based codes. And then, and then we've got the code requirements for doing improvements, uh, additions, taking out permits to do work on the, the, the and, buildings and so, downtown. So I'm going to throw a different spin at you. Besides the parking, it, is it possible to have a different set of codes for a special designated area like the downtown? Yes. Okay. For there are already for some building. of those that exist. Yes. There, and, there's and other if we cities. adopt this, is it going to erase what we've already adopted? Well, what, what, what actually happens in other jurisdictions is they'll define an area, like say we want to define our downtown area and we wanted to have form-based codes for that. That would address the zoning and development regulations and then uh, a good example, I think, is the city of Waco 
in their older areas. They've, and they've modified the, the actual <coughs> building code requirements as well. So you can do you can do both or any or all of those things in order to address those kinds of concerns in, in a particular area in the city. But those are some of the concerns I've heard about the downtown area. Is that uh, <coughs> they go in there and they might as well just raise the building and start from scratch because. To, to comply with all the codes is just almost impossible. And the other issue is the fire codes on some of these buildings. Where right. Do, do you know uh, what other uh, Valley cities have adopted the, the the new amendments? I think I'll let Mr. Ortega answer that, but I think we're the only city that's that's on the 2006. Most of them are updated either to 2009 or 2012. Uh, yeah, City of Brownsville was in the current 2012s. City of McAllen, 2012. Uh, City of Mercedes was on the 2012 codes. Uh, San Benito, I believe, was in the 2009. But that one, like Ken mentioned, that one's more stringent than the 2006. So I wouldn't recommend going to the 09s. And West Laco? West Laco was on the 2012s. It is on the 2012s. Yes. Okay, well, theori theoretically, if we've all got the same, we're all, you know, theoretically, these, these codes are promulgated by the, by the uh, and to, to all of the cities across the country, uh, encouraging them all to adopt the same or similar standards so that when a builder goes from one city to the next city, he's, he, he's working with the same set of rules. I mean, in theory, that's the way it's supposed to work, and so uh, we wouldn't be at a necessary advantage or a disadvantage. Uh, by adopting these codes, we're just adopting what, no, we're uh, just what, what the what organization that promulgates these codes is, is trying to get everybody to do uh, in order to uh, take advantage of best practices and safety standards and that kind of thing. Exactly. Now, I understand that, uh, you know, that as, a, as a developer, you can be resistant to these codes because they add cost in a lot of instances. Uh, to do th to do things that are safe, but on the other hand, if if we you know I don't think we're doing anything to disadvantage ourselves. No. I do think this issue of uh, you know older buildings. I agree with Commissioner Gilmore and Commissioner Leal. We need to address that one and for all. We've been talking about it for a long time, but we haven't done anything about it. So we need to right. do we need to do something yeah, that address addresses so that we can encourage development in these older buildings. And like I said, with the comprehensive plan, there's, there's a, a process okay. to put that into. And also, right. these, these codes are they're basically minimal codes. They're, they're not something that's, that's strict or more difficult than any other jurisdiction, as you mentioned. So okay. what's going to happen with the old buildings? Are they, they, they going to ask you the same, or are we going to let them? Well, the, the, the new code, the new code is in, in some areas is going to be a little less stringent depending upon what project or what comes in. But I think the important thing is the point that Commissioner Yulhorn is making is through this comprehensive plan process, if we get the framework for form-based codes and then if we decide that we want to identify the downtown area or whatever as an area where we want to put form-based codes in place in order to make it more flexible and easier for people to do developments or repurpose the old buildings down there. And then we do something with the building codes and the fire codes like some other cities across the country have done that have historic downtowns or historic districts. Um, I know Waco uh, is, a, is a good example because of the building official up there. <coughs> is kind of a, a leader around Texas for that. Uh, I used to work in California. The historic areas like downtown Sacramento, which has a really very interesting old historic district, they did that there in order to facilitate and help those buildings be able to develop and, and turn into businesses, uh, a good mix of retail, restaurants, et cetera. So I might, might even want to get Commissioner Yulmore to chair a committee on this to you know, make sure this happens. <laughs> talk about it, we actually get something done. I'd be so. looking for a good vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need to ask uh, the city attorney to read the caption. An ordinance repealing ordinance number 8-15, which enacted the predecessors of the following codes and adopted the 2012 edition of the Inter International Building Code, including appendixes. 
appendix chapter C, B, appendix appendices F through K, the 2012 International Residential Code, including appendix charters, chapters A through E, and appendices G, H, J, M, N, and P, the 2012 International Mechanical Code, the 2012 International Plumbing Code, including appendix chapters C through F, 2012 International Fuel Gas Code, 2012 International Energy Conservation Code, the 2012 International Fire Code, including uh, Appendix Chapters A through J, the 2012 International Property Maintenance Code, including Appendix Chapter A, <coughs> all published by the International Code Council, Incorporated, and the 2014 <coughs> National Electrical Code is adopted with the following amendments to said codes as described in Exhibits A and B, attached here to and incorporated by reference, repealing conflicting provisions in the other ordinances providing for publication and ordaining other matters related to the foregoing. So moved. There we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Item 9, to consider and take action to approve and adopt a resolution to accept an open invitation from the city of Matamoros, Tamaulipas, to become sister cities to exchange information and ideas with the city of Harlingen, including the sharing of information <coughs> of common interest to, from uh, nature uh, tourism. Uh, city Manager. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, Honor Geth from Matamoro. Uh, we, uh, we wanted to we, we bring in this resolution to the Commission. Uh, we had the opportunity, we had a quick invitation um, a couple of weeks ago from Matamoros to attend their 188th anniversary celebration. Uh, Commissioner Sanchez and, and I had the opportunity to attend it. Uh, you see in, in the middle is uh, the Mayor, uh, Let Leticia Salazar from the city, from the city of Matamoros. Tamaulipas, and uh, we had a, a chance to kind of uh, <coughs> chat with her, and you know, here we here they are cutting the cake, and um, it's a great, it was a great celebration. We really enjoyed it, um, and uh, here you see the U.S. consulate in Matamoros. Uh, we had we also had the Mexican consulate in Matamoros uh, present. Um, we enjoyed the uh, the invitation, and out of that. Uh, uh, celebration. We had a conversation with the, the mayor from Atamoros, and we talked about uh, trying to increase economic opportunities, international trade, and focusing on education and uh, tourism, um, and uh, the, the the exchange of information for infrastructure, emergency management, trade, transportation. Um, so out of that visit comes this resolution that we are now presented to the commission. And uh, we are honored to, to have uh, uh, the Mayor Pro Tem from the city of Ma uh, Matamoros. Thank you for, for, for being here. Reynaldo, also, thank you for being here. And, and so basically, we're, we're asking the commission um, to approve this resolution that would uh, basically make us the sister city cities with the city of Matamoros. All right, we have the resolution here before us. Uh, that the city of Harlingen hereby recognizes the city of Matamoros, Tamaulipas as a sister city and hereby accepts an open invitation from the city of Matamoros to exchange information and ideas with the city of Harlingen, including the sharing of information on common interests relating to education, emergency management, economic development, trade, transportation, and infrastructure, and tourism. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Oh, yeah. We think this is a great, uh, a great idea as we work toward uh, building a stronger relationship, uh, not only with uh, Matamoros, but our, our uh, friends in Brownsville and throughout Cameron County. And uh, it was a, I had the great privilege of uh, visiting uh, for a while with your mayor at the Bynet, uh Summit uh, at UTB and and uh, talking about that project. And so this is. This is just uh, what we need to do uh, to build a stronger region, and we uh, we look look forward to uh, working together. So, uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. All right. Would Would you all like to say anything? Uh, the first for the Spanish and uh, 
are the first to take the thing for the city of the Havinches, and the first to go for uh, the mayor, please, but for the rest of the city of the Havinches to say is thank you. It's a name for the, the mayor of the Mat city of the Matamoros, the Pizarazar. Because of this, uh, when we start this, uh, um, this period for uh, 2013 to 2016, it's very important to us to share our communication between two cities. Is to say thank you. Es muy importante para nosotros decir gracias a la ciudad de, Brand de Harvinchen, a lo que es el valle, porque es una oportunidad de poder eh, estrechar nuestros lazos de amistad, pero sobre todo el poder compartir diferentes aspectos en cuestiones de, de económicos, sociales, en cuestiones de seguridad, cuestión de salud. Es lo importante de poder decir y estrechar nuestra mano de amigos entre dos ciudades hermanas. Harvinchen y Matamoros. Gracias. City Commissioners, uh, Jose Rubio Jr. for the record, 2309 us in the road. First thing I would like to uh, inform you is that my brother, the uh, Captain Luciano Rubio, is very ill. He, he's, uh, I ask that you put him in your prayers. Uh, number two, I want to recognize especially Dan Serna for Morris Road, for what he's done to work on Morris Road and also for Commissioners uh, Sanchez and and uh, Victor Dad and anyone else who was involved in this project because it's, uh, I have to travel that road every day and it's the most, one of the most dangerous roads as you try to squeeze in. Number three, uh, for the delegation of Matamoros, les doy las gracias a ustedes que vienen. Harnsen tiene muchas oportunidades para ustedes. El pueblo de Matamoros crece, pero el pueblo de Harnsen está listo para crecer en más. Uh, y va a haber muchas oportunidades. Les doy las gracias por el interés que enseñan en Hornsen, pero que nomás no sean de palabras, que, son, que sean que realmente, porque hay muchas oportunidades de Hornsen en, en todas las áreas del pueblo. Hay, hay, hay para casas, hay para negocios, y nomás el respeto entre las dos, entre los dos, uh, entre las dos ciudades, pero yo, yo creo que hicieron una buena decisión y me da mucho gusto que ustedes vinieron. Gracias. The next item is an executive session, uh, and there will be no action taken after the executive session, and there are no other items of business after the executive session. Uh, so, uh, in other words, Jesse, nothing's going to happen, Nick, so if you can, if you can leave. <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> Item 11, Executive Closed Session, pursuant to Chapter 551, Subchapter D, BTCA Government Code Section 551.087 and 551.071 regarding commercial and financial information from the business project with which the city is conducting economic development negotiations in order to discuss or deliver financial or other incentives with the business prospect known as Project Blue and seek legal advice for city attorney. Is there a motion to go into executive session? I make a motion to go into executive session. Second. Favor say aye. 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 Aye.